Hello everyone. Today we will discuss about how virus is transmitted. First, I tell you about virus. Virus is a connecting link between living and non living. As we all know, viruses are some microscopic, spectral, broad shaped, or you can say it doesn't have any proper shape or proper structure. Virus consists of single type of sickly bacteria or RNA. And this nucleus is surrounded by a code consisting of one or more parts of molecules. Viruses are active when they are inside the cells of humans, animals, plants, or other organisms. And the viruses are usually cause diseases. As today's topic is transmission of plant viruses, so first we should know what is transmission. Transmission is the transfer or spread of virus or other pathogen from one plant to another. There are different ways. By which plant viruses are transmitted. As you can see, we have first very rapid transmission. That's the matter. Second matter is by again the transmission, by seed transmission, pollen transmission, the last by vector transmission. Okay, now let's discuss the first method that is transmission of plant virus by the grafting method. But before going into the detail of this transmission, First, we should know what is grafting. Grafting is a technique by which parts of two plants are joined together and then that will then make them unite for continuous growing in a single plant. So, you can say grafted plant composed of parts derived from two or more plants. Here you, can, here, you can see we have two types of plant part one is disease plant and another is healthy plant. So, in this method, the transmission of virus by grafting. Here, a stem cut from a diseased, diseased plant, and this disease stem grafted with the healthy plant. And when this happens, the symptoms of grafted is the symptoms are developed now on new growth of healthy plant. You know, the healthy plant also gets infected. Uh, another example of uh, grafting is tuber co grafting. Here, you can see. A piece cut from a diseased plant and grafted on a healthy potato tuber. Here you can see also develop uh, symptoms develop on new growth of healthy tuber now. Now the new plant also gets affected by the virus by the disease of the diseased tuber. So now let's discuss the another method of grafting that is leaf grafting method. Here you can see when an infected leaf grafted on another leaf of a healthy plant, then the whole plant comes in contact of this virus. And so the virus is transmitted and disease appear on you can see on the whole plant. Now let's see the another method of transmission that is mechanical transmission. Mechanical transmission, you can see we have virus of the plant. First we need we uh, cut young leaves from a virus infected plant. We cut this young disease leaves from a our infected plant. And then these leaves are uh, you know grounded with a rubber fur, the buffer and we and form a sap. And this sap is called the sap is called an infected sap. Now after this infected sap, the sap is being dried and uh, there's a pick up on fingers caused by graft of it. This uh, sap has been dried and formed into a uh, powder, into a powder form, and that's the one I have use of any plant. In this inoperative plant, rinse with water. Cut the sap up on heavy plant with fingers caused by glass or brush, etc. And this inoperative plant rinse with water. And kept in greenhouse or in the sunlight. I kept in greenhouse or, or go chamber or in sunlight. After 21 days, the symptoms appears on the, the negative plant. And now let's discuss another transmission that is seed transmission. Seed transmission is also a good way of uh, virus transmission. And it's very simple when an infected seed or infected seed of infected plant is used in farming, then the germinating 
receiving also if you see the another example of fault transmission you can see this is the flower of inducted tree and this is the flower of healthy tree when the pollen moves from inducted flower to a healthy flower and then the whole plants or new tree whole healthy tree gets affected by this virus via transferring of pollen grains next is vector transmission vector transmission is uh, another transmission where virus needs a vector to transmit the disease to transmit. Vector helps in the transmission of viruses. Here we have nematode as a vector, so we can also say it has a nematode transmission. Here a nematode vectors feeding on the roots of infected plants, and then the virus inserts in the ceramic end of the vector. When this uh, nematode moves to a towards a healthy root, healthy plant, and feeding on the healthy roots, feeding on a healthy root, and then the, the whole plant gets affected by the virus. virus. Epic virus transmission is another example of vector transmission. Where epic is a vector who transmits viruses. These are the body parts of epic that is food canal, salivary gland, cogut, midgut, and when the synapid sucks any infected plant, virus comes into the contact of comes to the contact of cogut first of the of that epic and then transfer to the salivary gland. And when this epic sucks any other healthy plant the virus enter into the tissue of healthy plant so healthy one also affected by these viruses that's the way the epic transmits the virus from healthy plant to a healthy plant here are different ways different vectors which are responsible to transmit viruses like mice white flies beetles fungi grasshopper but the body is more important that is how to control these plant viruses we need to apply different different methods. We need to plant symptomless plants. We need to dedicate this is not from the field. We need to control uh, in spreading these vectors. We need to remove all these uh, unnecessary plants which we call weed. That's our fumigation by using virus free seed, tuber, burn, etc. Because this is very important to control these plant viruses, otherwise you will not find any unattractive plant. So we need to really really control these plant viruses. So that's for the today's session. Thank you very much. And we'll come up with any other video.